Good evening viewers wherever you are watching from in the diaspora and within Uganda. Thank you for making NTV your number one station and we are glad you have made NTV People's Parliament your favorite program. We are in Kampala another Saturday to discuss yet a very important topic that does not only affect the people of Kampala but the entire country and that is HIV financing, financing of HIV programs in Uganda. I am your speaker, Agnes Nandutu. We are also live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Please go to our NTV People's Parliament page and like it. Good evening, honorable members. You are welcome to this very important parliament discussing a very important topic that affects you and me, your children, your family, and your country at large, financing HIV programs in Uganda. If I can give you some information, the number of Ugandans dying from HIV related illnesses has reduced from by 50.7% in one year according to the report from the Ministry of Health. And according to the Ministry of Health, 31,000 people died of HIV in 2014, down from 63,000 in 2013, a reduction by half. HIV related deaths were 67 thousand in 2010 and over 75,000 in late 90s and early 80s. Um, worldwide, HIV AIDS related deaths have fallen by 45% since the peak in 2005. And according to Dr. Aken, he, she attributed the success to the increasing number of HIV patients accessing ARVs drugs, hence the stagnation of HIV prevalence in Uganda. I would like to invite Honorable Member, you will introduce your name, to take the podium and give us the preamble of financing HIV programs in Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm called Honorable William Kidega. I do work for PATH and PATH under the USAID funded Advocates for Better Health Project, whose goal is to improve the quality, availability of health and accessibility of health and other social services. HIV and AIDS is a paramount theme that we work on, and specifically, given the building blocks of any health system, sustainable health financing is important. Of recent, we note and we recognize that there's a big initiative that the President, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, launched, and that is the first track initiative on ending HIV AIDS by 2030. It speaks very well to the tenant of financing. However, there are many challenges we still face. We note that as Uganda, we heavily rely on donor funding. Uh, I'll give you a bit of statistics and evidence. 68% uh, of funding to HIV AIDS programming in Uganda. 65%. 65%. Comes, is 68, honorable. 68%. The, the evidence is 68%. Comes from uh, donors, likely the global fund, uh, PEPFA uh, and other development partners uh, across the globe. But also we note, we note that 20% is out of pocket, pocket financing that comes from you and me and anyone else across the, uh, the country. 11% is the only contribution that we receive from government of Uganda and 1% from the private sector. So what are we trying to say here as uh, the parliament, uh, as we discuss today in this parliament? What can we do differently to ensure that we prevent and control <coughs> HIV in the country without over-reliance on donor funding? I beg to submit on our vote. So the success of uh, reducing HIV prevalence in Uganda is added to the donors. Without donors, we don't have done much. Is that so? The government has done its part, but we are saying, can we do more? Can we do more? Move from 11%. From 11%. Honestly, if any tap is switched off from any donor, we should be in a major crisis. I stop. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, I don't know whether we have somebody from the Ministry of Health, but we have Uganda AIDS Commission. Please give you three minutes to tell us something from Uganda AIDS Commission. Come and speak from here. Right, Honorable, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, honorable members, uh, my name is Honorable Inid Wamani, uh, representing Uganda AIDS Commission, the Acting Director General. 
um, thank you for this opportunity for Uganda AIDS Commission to engage in this very important uh, conversation about uh, financing for the HIV AIDS agenda in this country. Um, I would build on what our colleague, the previous uh, honorable speaker has said to, to mention that the government of Uganda has made some good efforts towards financing HIV and AIDS interventions in this country. Um, yes, it should be more, and we are making a case as stakeholders to say we need to move from the current 11% that we are at to ensure that we can take charge as a country to finance our national response to this epidemic. Um, we do realize, and the, honorable, the previous honorable speaker has hinted at the renewed leadership that our president, His Excellency, our president of this Republic of Uganda is making towards revitalizing efforts to fight HIV epidemic. Um, early this month, he launched the Fast Track Initiative to ensure that we can end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030, and that goes a long way in ensuring that all of us as constituencies, all of us as stakeholders invest money, invest our energies, invest our, all the interventions that we are doing towards ensuring that we actually work towards um, achieving these very ambitious targets that we have set as a country, and actually globally, uh, it's the same targets. Um, and by having His Excellency the President in the lead shows how much commitment the government is making towards ensuring that we actually deal a blow on this epidemic. Um, it's also uh, very important to mention that uh, the AIDS Trust Fund that the, recent, uh, the previous uh, speaker talked about has been very well received in country. Uh, we have had cabinet pass uh, the regulations for this fund, and right now we are waiting for parliament to actually uh, review and uh, take their decision on the regulations, and then the fund should get rolling. This fund is aiming at ensuring that we raise local, domestic, homegrown resources to tackle this epidemic. So that shows you how much government is putting into investing domestically to ensure that we actually can raise through our various means, through the private sector, through uh, different avenues to ensure that we can uh, raise resources and uh, meet our targets that we have set. Um, Uganda AIDS Commission coordinates various stakeholders, including the private sector, and I'm glad they are present today. They will be giving us a lot more about the innovations that they are making towards ensuring that we raise more resources for, to respond to this epidemic. Um, right Honorable Speaker, I wish to uh, pause here for the moment. We have more colleagues from the Thank Commission, you. and they will add on. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Member, for that very, very important information. Just as the members are saying, government gives 11% towards HIV, financing HIV programs in Uganda. What can we do better? How can we do better to ensure that we increase the funding to help the people who are perishing down there in the villages around the country? Please join us on Facebook. We are live on Facebook, on Twitter, and YouTube. Please also like NTV People's Parliament and keep contributing. Honorable members, now what can we do as we discuss? What can government do? What can stakeholders, you and me, do? to ensure that we move from 11% to uh, maybe beyond the donors funding of 80, 68%. I am Salome Atim. I work at uh, the National Forum of Poor Living with HIV and AIDS Networks in Uganda as an advocacy officer for the ABH project. Okay. Yes. Uh, so my concern is, um, maybe my concern is to you, the government, that even the 11% they give, first of all, it's very little, but they don't, uh, eventually give all of it, and this is what contributed to the crisis uh, my colleague has just uh, shared, where we realized that uh, we are having an impending stock out July to December, but we are, we are hopeful that this will be resolved and this it will not year? happen. Yes, that's what we had been told uh, during the process of the Global Fund application, because oh. of such um, failure by the government to commit. So for me, my plea is I wish the government would uh, increase the funding to at least from this 11% to 50%, because as we adopt the policies such as test and treat, for us in the community, we are encouraging everybody who is positive to come and seek for services. And when they go to the health centers and they are stock out of ARZs, 
it is very embarrassing and also it's a dis it is discouraging and we know that if we had followed down that road we are going to we will not be able to control the epidemic okay thank you and according to to the first track initiative by his excellency the president if we are to stay at 11 percent we shall not achieve this dream of ending by the way ending it's not even uh decreasing but ending hiv by 2030 so we need to <laughs> to, to, to come up and put more money Madam Speaker and members of this parliament, my name is Amabilis Godfrey Kayongo. I work for Kamocha Christian Caring Community. The way we've had these figures and other members, government can increase the level of funding or improve the level of funding by, in, by introducing what we call the private public partnership. The way it has done, whether projects like uh, dams, roads, and all that. In my organization, a clinic just close to Mlago Hospital, a national referral hospital, if government walked in and paid for a doctor, just one doctor like this, that organization is reaching out to 5,000 HIV AIDS clients and over 10,000 who have not gone into care. But if only government went in and partnered with private entities like those ones, we can increase the level of funding and it will be very successful, I'm telling you. When you see the level of funding in HIV AIDS in this country, the bulk of the work is being done by private entities, private hospitals, uh, mission hospitals, and private individuals. If only government walked in and partnered with those entities, I'm telling you would raise, would realize a high level of success through that private partnership. I'm sure would realize a much success if government only did that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Honorable George Tamale. The private sector last year came up with an innovative financing mechanism dubbed the One Dollar Initiative that is calling on the private companies to contribute to invest more than what they are doing currently. We've had the, the 28,000 people who are dying every year because of HIV. These are our brothers they are our sisters, they are our relatives. If we don't realize that and start an initiative where we can also contribute, if we left it to government alone, 2030 dream may not be realized. Now, to us as the private sector, the people dying are our customers, they are our workers, they are the people who are buying our goods and services. The one dollar initiative comes in to support the existing government, donor, and civil society contributions so that we end also HIV by 2030. And so there are a lot of interventions that we are putting in. The hotel sector is giving us free venues for meetings related to HIV and AIDS. The manufacturing sector have agreed to label put tagline on their products with messages cleared by Uganda AIDS Commission so that the different subgroups can read and join in the fight to end HIV and AIDS. I would like to conclude by saying the fight against HIV and AIDS cannot be left to one party to handle. As we've heard, government is doing its part. We are calling uh, on them to increase. The private sector is doing its part. The civil society is doing its part. Now we are calling on all the Ugandans to join the fight and play a part. From our side, we are calling on a, an investment of 3,600 shillings. That is like one dollar. Both Ugandans. We are called, this is the private sector and also any other interested Ugandans to, call, to invest this money so that we can have a sustainable financing for HIV and AIDS eradication in the country. I beg to submit. Madam Thank Speaker. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's also a very good initiative. As you are aware, government has done a lot to reduce the HIV infections in the country, but. If we keep reducing the financing, then we shall get back. Let's arm up 
and ensure that we increase funding to fight HIV AIDS. And if we are to end it by 2030, then we need to do more. And TV People's Parliament comes back shortly. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching your number one program, NTV People's Parliament. It's the only program that gives you a platform to speak about issues that affect your everyday life. Please join us on live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Go to our page, NTV People's Parliament, and we keep conversing, financing HIV AIDS programs in Uganda. As you have heard, members who are sitting here are contributing the 11% that government is pushing towards HIV financing is too little to achieve the first track initiative of ending HIV AIDS by 2030. Yes, honorable members, how can we move forward? Thank you, honorable speaker. Uh, honorable members present here. Honorable speaker, allow me to emphasize the point that as a country, we need to actually do more. We have come a long way as a country. We led the, 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 the response to HIV globally. We're praised for that. But somewhere, somehow, I think because of the too many praises, Honorable Speaker, we got comfortable. People are coming to learn us from West Africa, from yes, they're coming Honorable. to learn from Uganda. Yes. So the comfort the comfort did us more harm than good. And we, uh, like we have just mentioned here by one speaker, that the president saw that actually people were going to sleep and realized that he had to stand up again. And that's why he is personally leading the fast track initiative. But the fast track initiative, Honorable Speaker, cannot be achieved without investment. Yeah. We must invest in it. <laughs> now, as a country, like uh, the previous honorable speaker, I mean speaker mentioned, has done fairly good enough, but it's working hard to do more. And uh, like the 11 percent we have been mentioning about is not comfortable for the, gov for the government. And as the coordinator for the response, Uganda AIDS Commission has come up with a resource mobilization strategy, particularly to address the sustainable financing objective for the fast track initiative and in the resource mobilization strategy one of the high most ranked strategies is to increase government financing for the response from 11 percent to 40 percent by 2020. HIV has a number of areas or interventions that can be done but as a country to be in charge there are things that we must do ourselves we should not let them in the hands of other people Things like treatment and prevention. The government should come out with an affirmative action that no one should treat a Ugandan when they are there. No one should prevent HIV infection from a Ugandan when we are there. So if the government can pick out just two components of treating and prevention, like especially biomedical prevention, then we shall have raised the contribution of the government. Partners are there to help us. And if a partner comes, the partner should ask us, what have you done and where can I help you? And the partner for us as a government, we should ably say, help me with mobilizing the communities to come for my treatment as a government. Help me to create awareness from the communities. And me as a government, I'll be there ready to do the treatment. This is happening in one of the uh, countries, like South Africa. You don't treat for them. All the monies that are coming for treatment is by government. And if we did that as the government, the 40% will be realized. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that important position. Actually, uh, it, it is very bad that we, we sat back when we were being praised by the entire world that Uganda is doing well in fighting HIV AIDS. People were coming from different countries to come to us. Muchikola Mutia, how do you do it? But now we might be beginning to go and learn from other countries. You have the platform, Honorable Member. Thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, I think what government has to do 
is to prioritize the issue of health more when it comes to national budgeting. We have to go back and ask ourselves what is our priority? <laughs> what are the priority areas? Today we are seeing government saying road construction and all that, but we are constructing for people who are going to fall sick and die tomorrow. <laughs> Again, with this cancer of corruption going on, whereby people can fail to account for 792 billion shillings meant for funding health care, and we are looking for money for funding HIV AIDS prevention and treatment. We will not get there unless we also deal with corruption in government. <laughs> the Minister of Health and civil society organizations that are here, we have to come together, create a critical mass, we lobby government, we empower people at the community up to all positions of leadership such that we can have increased financing and prioritizing for health care in this country. That is my submission. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And honorable members, construction companies who are doing our roads, dams, and all the other constructions are supposed to be having a component for HIV AIDS in their programming so that they can be able to deal with the sensitization prevention in the areas where they work. But what are we seeing today? Everywhere where there is construction of a road, the men who are there are crying. All their women are being taken by these truck drivers. And at the end of the day, the infection rates are increasing. <laughs> and what is happening with the construction companies, all they do is put a poster to say uh, HIV AIDS kills. And, and they are taking so much money in terms of construction when they could be allocating a certain percentage to deal with the aftermath of the road construction. You are very aware that at one point the Kamenga road had been closed because of issues like that. The men were crying or the women were being taken. So I even think children or even or children were being, you know, impregnated. impregnated. So I think government needs really to do the enforcement bit. The enforcement is one of the areas that is lacking. Who is monitoring that aspect? And I would like also to add that enforcement on the part of government is also uh, uh, needed in terms of the commitments that they make with the donors, for instance. I can give an example. Uh, for instance, Minister of Health, before signing agreements with the PEPFA, for instance, they agreed that they would be taking on staff who are being recruited by PEPFA. There are so many uh, cadres who are working in the HIV AIDS response, actually over 1,500. Uh, who are working in the HIV AIDS response, but government committed to take them on as part of the sustainability plan. And these workers have not been taken on up to now. A few have been taken on, but they, it is at a slow pace. So that commitment is really needed on the part of government to meet its bargain, so that as the donors are putting in money, government also meets its bargain. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. You have the platform. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Two minutes, please. Honorable members of parliament in this August House, my name is Anne Peace Waguma, honorable member of parliament representing the constituency of people living with HIV. Now, my submission is in taxes. We realize taxes in private, that is households, and government also puts in just that small percentage they have told us and the rest is grants, bilateral, multilateral funding. So as the previous speaker from the <laughs> Honorable, from the <coughs> Uganda AIDS Commission told us of the AIDS Trust Fund, we are very grateful as a constituency because this fund is going to help us a great deal. But the, the taxable items that we are put, just soft drinks that raise 2% of that fund, will not be enough. So we believe if they would also tag on the oil and other substances, it could also help us realize some other commitment. 
Then my, also, my other submission also is to look at the district leadership. If they would also raise some small funding locally, it can help to increase and help in the facilitation of the adherence concerns in retention into care under the differentiated service delivery model because it is workable and we can yield good results. I beg to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they should walk the talk. <laughs> you have the platform. Yes, the right, Honorable Speaker and uh, members of Honorable Members. I am Ruben Tinomjini, an MP representing Uganda AIDS Commission constituency. I would like to clarify on this issue of uh, the AIDS Trust Fund. It is not that it's only 2% from beers. There are several other things. Yes, it is true, it is 2% from beers, from spirits and waraji, from uh, soft drinks, sodas, and then uh, bottled water. That is one. But other, there are other tax revenues from any other taxable, as determined by the Minister of Finance from time to time. And that can be anything. So you can't limit this because it is not specific. It can be oil, it can be anything beyond what you can think or imagine. And we, there are also other things like voluntary organization and donations. So the AIDS Trust Fund is not only 2% from beer, but much more and can yield much more. So this 2% you are talking about will generate some good money, but there are other op alternatives. So that is... Yes, Honorable Member, please take the floor. An honorable member wants to give you information. It's okay. Information is well. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, just to react to what my honorable fellow honorable is presenting on the tax base, the 2%, we all know that that 2% will raise it about 9.5 billion. It is actually uh, 8.6 billion. And, and surely 8.6 uh, in the response. What will that do? This uh, this is 2%. Yes, 2%. 2% brings 8 billion. Yes. Then other areas bring much but more. But those other areas we are not sure of. Why don't we, and uh, Madam Speaker, <laughs> I, I propose... We are in speak the process, to the people, speak to the people. We are in the process of passing the statutory in instruments to implement the National AIDS Trust Fund. Why don't we now identify sources of revenue that will generate a sizable amount? We are talking of raising 40%. I beg to submit. I think you're right. You, we, we need to be clear to see where is the money coming from. Members, the regulations are now before the HIV Committee of Parliament awaiting contributions. If you feel there is something you want to suggest, you know where to go. Okay. So this Thank is you. it. Now, Please, advocacy for health. Try to approach the HIV Committee of Parliament. Put your input and say, please, let's get more money from other. We have seen that the government gives 11% statistically, yes, and there is no doubt we would want that this is increased. As, as my fellow honorable from Uganda AIDS Commission said, the, the, the strategy, the resource mobilization strategy has more other things and is looking forward to increasing the percentage. We all want it, we are all advocating for it, we are all looking forward to it. But also, you know government has more things, is not committed to one health sector. It's not committed to one aid sector. There are many other things we, we, we need, and that is being done. But now, what we need to know, there is government will, honestly, to fight HIV. And this 11% is something we should appreciate. And the government will. And the president has himself come, and he has led the initiative to fight AIDS. That is good government will. I, think, has, I, th I think Ugandans appreciate, but they yes. are saying, please. But Some also, the, the 8% the 68% we are talking about from donors, that is very good and we highly appreciate. But it is because of the good international relations, a good environment for them to come and invest, and we appreciate and that is in place. But also, now other things that we have talked about is you and me contributing. The member from the private sector has told us of the one dollar initiative. That's mainly what I wanted to, to emphasize. And it calls upon you and me to contribute minimum 3,600. That is one dollar a year. Now let's assume that you and I, who are very concerned and willing to stop the East AIDS, have contributed 5,000 a month from your earning, only 5,000. And we are over 35 million. Let's assume that 15 million of us have contributed 5,000. This will generate 75 billion a month. 
And let's assume we consistently do it, only 15 of us, only 5,000 of us, we continue and um, contribute to this 5,000 for 12 year, months a year, this will give us 900 billion. Let's assume that we have consistently contributed 5,000 for five years. We'll have contributed 4 trillion, 500 billion. You and I can make a difference. The government will do what it does, the aid development partners will do what they do, but you and I can make a difference. We can contribute much more. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. It sounds good, but Ugandans should come up and support this. Just as you have heard from Honorable Members, let it be me and you. Let's go for a short break, and when we come back, we shall look for solutions. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kampala discussing financing HIV programs in Uganda. What can government, you and me, do to ensure that we end HIV AIDS in Uganda by 2030 according to the Fast Track Initiative by His Excellency, the President of Uganda? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm Honorable Elvis. I represent the Global Alliance of HIV Positive Journalists. Actually, the law was passed in 2014, and it was assented to by the President around the 1st July 2014. And since that time, the ATF has not been approved. But yesterday only we got good news that the fund has been approved, but by the Cabinet. We are just waiting for the parliament to review it and then approve it. Then if it approves it, it, become, it will become operational. Okay. Now, uh, when we talk about the presidential first uh, track initiative, one of the five, the, the five points that were listed down includes stopping new infections, especially among us the young ones. And uh, uh, we men were accused of, <laughs> of not really involving so much. Main involvement, we were told by the, pres by the president that it was wanting. Isn't Jimmy. that true that men are not supportive in, age, in terms of going for tests? I, I was coming to that. Okay, I, 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 go I ahead. I don't dispute <laughs> that. I don't dispute that. I know it is wanting. Our involvement is wanting. But there was a time in two days only when we got funding, we managed to test over 1,200 men because we are centering on men. 1,200 men. The funding from donors has become a, a bit tricky. Uh, we are told it's 67% of the resources that go in for funding HIV comes from the donors, 68, 11% uh, only from the government, and then the public sector plus the public uh, people like you and me, we also contribute somehow. But suppose these donors pull away. So what I want to say is the solution is is the only the fund. If it has, if it comes into place, and it is. Uh, it becomes functional. That's the only solution because we have to look for our own money. Whichever way we look for it, we have to look for our money instead of depending on donors. Otherwise, we have so many goals like the 90-90-90. There is no way we can, achieve, we can achieve the 90-90 and the test for treat if we don't have our own funding. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we needed this HIV uh, AIDS Trust Fund by yesterday. And it's high time that the cabinet hurries up, parliament hurries up that we have it uh, to ensure that we fight HIV AIDS out of Uganda. Yes, one remember you have the platform. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm one person who does not believe there's not enough money 
with the government of Uganda. I'm convinced lack of prioritization is our problem. <laughs> Uganda's administrative structure is too heavy for the economy to have this money come to the relevant sector. Let, let's look at issues. And, and let us let, let's speak honestly. I even don't know how many districts we have today. One twenty something like that. But what does it mean? We are also increasing the number of members of parliament with high emoluments. All this this money should have gone into this vital sector we are talking about today. Germany has a cabinet of fifteen members. Is it giving less services to their people than Uganda, which has many cabinet members? No. The point is the other time I've been to the well district, I was disgruntled. The law of health centre three, when a president is coming for Heroes Day, they paint it. <laughs> Are we painting it for the president? Are we painting it for the president? These are Ugandans, and that is the maker of this government. I'm talking about facts. Um, you know, Ugandans, we should stop talking, you know, going distances to please. Things will not change. From this hall, Madam Speaker, I'm appealing to each one of you to begin the advocacy from here. Thank you. Please grab the platform, Madam Speaker. I am Dr. Monica Nolan uh, from Macquarie University Johns Hopkins Research Collaboration. And I, I wanted to just say, um, make two points. Um, one is that there's a very exciting uh, pipeline of new products, new HIV prevention products, and also better treatment options that are safer with lower side effects, but they cost money. So if, it's, if we're serious about ending the epidemic in Uganda and elsewhere by 2030, the current level of resources is not enough. So I, I, I just wanted to emphasise that. The second point I wanted to make on an international perspective is that the world today is possibly more uncertain than it ever has been in any of our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, I, I previously worked for the US government, I don't currently, um, but the US government and the people of the US have been very generous since 2003, 2004. And in all countries, including Uganda, the vast proportion of the resources coming to fight HIV is from that source. A president of the United States that puts what? Uganda first or America first? America. <laughs> And with the America First uh, approach, it's very, very uncertain what kind of sustained commitment there will be. So I wanted to add a sense of emergency in this room, that if 11% after 15 years of international financing at huge levels is, can I say pathetic? It's very, very low. And if, if there's a change in the donor resources, particularly from the American government, which is what is on the cards, happens in the next year, it is a crisis. And all of the people in Uganda that are on treatment today, is, if their drug supply is threatened, what will happen? It's far away from 2030. So I wanted to add an, a, a sense of urgency uh, in the room and really endorse the previous speaker's uh, comments and contributions about how that can change in Uganda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed, uh, like we are saying, Uganda, I think, has a lot of money, but priorities are our problem. How much money is being stolen? For sure, if we put that in, <laughs> financing HIV AIDS in Uganda. Wouldn't HIV AIDS be a dream by 2030? Honorable member, you have the platform. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker. The previous speaker on this, on this podium said that uh, the health budget we are talking about the health budget. In every, each financial year, it's being cut altogether. And sectors like security and defense, they're increasing. Yet I don't see any war in my country. <laughs> <laughs> so, in addition to that, they, they increase also the budget of housing and infrastructure, saying that building the roads. Who might be building the roads when yet we are going to die? <laughs> who use those infrastructure? And who lives in those houses? 
all the times I hear that uh, the private sector, private sector, they are contributing one dollar. Is that what you can do, guys? How much do you think we should contribute? Maybe thirty thirty thousand dollars each. Because no I'm giving you facts because I know all of you have heard that this private sector, most of them have loans. They run to the government, the government to pay for them loans. Yes, the private sector, we buy, the, we buy their products, we give them money, and then we, we give them even loans to pay for their loans. So where, where does that government get that money to pay the loans of the people who got loans? So Which means they have them. money. <laughs> Yeah, it means the government had money, that they got that money into other things. Last year, we didn't even utilize 70% of the group fund money, which is meant for the H health sector, especially HIV and malaria and TB. HIV is losing a face of priority on the global agenda. No one wants to fund HIV. So if we don't start up right, right now, there's no way. And I, I, I end here saying, Uganda, we have money. And we should. We invest. just need to shout so that they invest that money in where we want it to be invested. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Emma. I'm Martha Clara Naketo, Young Positives Ambassador with the Uganda Network of Young People Living with HIV. As one of the wisest men says, God for us all, but every man for his own stomach. Yeah. We cannot sit and wait. The government says funds 11%. But the pocket money from us is 25%. Logically speaking, it means 14% of the money is from the people. And the government contributes 4%. But they can still hide and say 11%. <laughs> An accountant so you like think me. They're telling us lies? Those are lies. Seriously speaking, <laughs> we cannot say. HIV will end in 2030. If we don't stand up, if we don't stand up and do something... Okay, thank you. I don't uh, thank you. This is a very interesting topic. Please, I give you two minutes. Right, Honorable Speaker, I start from the previous speaker's point. I think prioritization is quite important. Everyone alludes to that. More so, Lowering the admin costs in government, we have so many structures that are costly, including parliament, so we need to do something about it. The other key thing that comes up strongly is the issue of increasing financing uh, from 11% to about 50%. Uh, a key point uh, that came up strongly is the issue of the $1 initiative where the private sector needs to do a lot more than that. But also relatedly, uh, the issue of the National AIDS Trust Fund comes up. The people are saying, can we try to identify proper and plausible tax bases to inform the revenue we generate? We also note clearly that uh, we need to embrace the public-private partnership, all of us, but the responsibility bit is not negated. You as a citizen, myself as a citizen, have a role to play. Uh, we note that the issue of fraud, waste and abuse is gross. How do we curb corruption in this country? There's a lot of leakages, there's pilferage. How do we block the leakages as a country? I think that's quite important. But also above all, uh, the technologies that have been proven uh, by uh, different researchers that are on the market, but without funding them at this rate, there is no way we can prevent using only one strategy. So there's need to find new biomedical uh, uh, HIV prevention technologies. That comes up strongly. So on our part, we're also saying, can we own up to commitments as government? I think key is uh, we committed as government of Uganda to take on staff. For example, when PEFA came up on board, we said we should absorb 1,500 plus staff that are funded by PEFA. Can government do something and absorb them? Okay. Right now, we are functioning as though we're functioning on donor resources. So we can do a lot more than that. I beg to submit. Because of the importance of this topic, I beg that we shall push it to next week such that we can finalize. I am your speaker, Agnes Nandutu, and as usual, I aspire to inspire you before I expire. With powers conferred upon me as the speaker of People's Parliament, I adjourn this house until next Saturday. The views. 
expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.